I'm Taylor Vitani, and thank you so much for joining us for another episode of The Living Show, Living in Shelby Township. Today, I am with my new friend, Jim Diaz. Jim, he's a part of the Lions Club here in Shelby Township, and Jim's gonna give us a little bit of information here at River Bends Park, the new playground, barrier-free playground that has just been placed here. Hi, Jim, thanks so much for joining us today. Oh, wow. This is exciting, this yeah. is an exciting time. So give us a little bit of information on the playground itself. So the, the playground itself, uh, this is, it's actually been done in two phases. We've been doing it over the last three years. Uh, Barrier-free basically means, and it's all-inclusive, so it's set up for all types of children to come in and play and enjoy the playground, uh, including children with wheelchairs. So it's, it's very wheelchair accessible. If you look at a traditional playground, you have a lot of wood chips and stuff that does not work very well. If you have a, a wheelchair, you can't maneuver in the playground. So what you'll see at this playground is there's a rubberized surface. And this is actually a big expense of the park is just putting in this rubberized surface. So uh, we do have that in there. The equipment itself, a lot of it is designed so that a small child could play on all the, all the instruments. And uh, what we have here in phase two is we have 11 instruments that we've put into the park uh, so, that, so that the kids can enjoy the musical instruments. Amazing. So tell us a little bit about funding. Like, who's to thank for funding for this project? So this, this project was done in two phases. Phase one, we spent over $220,000 on the playground. Um, half of that was basically came from Lions International. We had a matching grant for over $100,000 from Lions International phase one. That's the area that's in beige. Uh, with the zip lines and all that. Um, the rest of the money was raised with um, other service groups here in Shelby Township, like the Qantas, uh, the Rotary, um, and, and various other groups. Um, so we raised that funds to get phase, phase one off the ground. We knew we wanted to do phase two, but we just didn't have enough money at the time. Uh, so now, uh, during COVID, everyone is still tried to raise funds, and we were able to raise another $45,000 to finish phase two, which is the music stations. That's amazing, so. yes. Well, looking around, we came here the other day too and just watched kids loving the place. This is so cool. Everything's so new and modern and it just looks great in here. And I can't wait for people to just come and experience this. I, I, you know, I'm at the park every day uh, and we're working on this project and you, you see the park being used all the time. And the very first comment people do is, wow, this is, this is cool. I didn't know this existed. So our first objective is to make sure people understand, first of all, there is a barrier-free all-inclusive park in the county, and here it is, and please come enjoy it. That's what it's for. And uh, the other quick story I'll tell you is, I was just here um, uh, the other day, and uh, there was a grandfather and a, a young daughter, or a, a young granddaughter, granddaughter. <laughs> uh, they were on the zip line, and the grandfather was pushing the granddaughter on the zip line, and you could tell they were having fun. And the granddaughter got off the zip line and he says now grandpa you get on the zip line <laughs> and she pushed him and he was having a ball so um, fun for all ages it's Anna. about making those memories that's what life is all about so that we're glad we're great. able to do that so i understand too that is it is close enough for handicapped parking to come in and as far as restrooms those are close by is that all for the barrier free yes feeling? shelby township has been phenomenal in helping us pick the location uh, when we first came up with the idea, the township was like, what do you guys need? Um, we, we found a location where the restrooms are right there. The township came in, put in more uh, handicapped parking. And I'll, I'll state this too, uh, the township uh, recreation, parks and recreation department who helped us facilitate all this, these guys were fantastic. We had deadlines and crunch times and, and with all the things that they had going on for Shelby Township. Um, they made this happen uh, for us and we really do appreciate all their help. And we are so grateful to all of you, everyone who was involved in getting this playground all set up. So thank you so much. This has been very cool and I think that you should definitely come and visit this playground. Thanks so much, Jim, for joining us. You're welcome. Everyone, come down, tell everyone we're here. It's a great park, place to come to. <laughs> Humans have been gathering around fires, sharing stories for centuries. Uh -oh. It appears these hot ashes are about to be dumped, which could possibly start a wildfire. Oh my gosh. Bear. Wait just bear. a minute. Is that the Smokey Bear? He scared us. How will Smokey deal with such a hot situation? Precisely, the garden house defense. Next, a thorough stir. Then, another spray. And finally, the true test. Feeling if the ashes are cool. It looks like they are. Bravo. Wait, do you mind if we could just... Ah, yes. Really the selfie. 
a ritual practiced so frequently with this tribe, but not so much by Smokey Bear. Just one second, Smokey. Wait. Only you can prevent wildfires. This is our 34th annual fishing derby. This is my 20th, I think, being here. I actually work in this. It's a great day. We have a lot of families here, pre-registered people for the first time in 34 years. So they have to wait in line, get out there fishing right away. I think we have about 105 kids here today fishing, and it uh, looks like everyone's having a great time so far. I would probably say 75% of the people here have come back year after year. We've had people who were here and now even have grandkids here that have fished and they bring their kids back too as well. So uh, people love it. We have some great prizes that we'll give away at the end of the day. So um, as long as the weather holds out each year, it's usually a good family event. We do like to thank uh, the families for coming out, especially grandma, grandpa, you know, any sponsors that we have. We've had tons of sponsors over the years. Uh, we definitely like to thank them because we do have expenses such as the bait that we provide for the families, the prizes. So we do thank them for that. Um, thank our workers at Parks and Rec for coming out on a Saturday to work the event and just thank the kids for coming out and having a good time. Can you tell me about the fish you caught so far? It was pretty big. It was about 12 inches. That's super cool. Were you really excited when you caught it? Yeah, I was like, wow, this is a really big fish. Have you ever caught a fish that big before? I mean, before I've caught, I once caught like a seven inch walleye. That's really cool. Were you really excited about that one? Yeah. So are you happy you beat your record? Yeah, by five inches. That's awesome. Do you think that you might catch a bigger fish today, maybe? I hope I can do that. I got all like 10 a little ones and then I, I had 11 more and then that's it. Wow. And do you think that you're going to catch more today? You do? How many do you think you're going to catch? I catch like 13 or 100. 13 or 100? <laughs> How many do you think you, she's going to catch? Do you think she'll do the same amount? Yeah, I think I will do 140 to 1,060. Are you guys having fun so far? Yeah. Yes? Yes. All right, I'm going to start off with Addison. Addison, can you tell me what your favorite part is so far? Well, my favorite part is being with my friends and getting to touch fish and snails. That's a good favorite part. Catching the fish and putting them back in and catching the snails and being with my best friend. Oh, those are some really good, fun, and favorite things to have. Now, Jason, huh. can you tell me what's your favorite part about today so far? Uh, I don't know. Do you like the fish? Yeah. Yeah? And I like the turtles. <gasps> the turtles? Yeah. And did you see snails too? Yeah. Oh wow. That is And awesome. I like worms. I honestly think everything is best about this thing. It's all for fun and it doesn't really matter who wins or loses. Well, I mostly like about fishing is just like the fun it it's relaxing. You just get to throw your rod in the water and just kind of relax. And it's the best feeling when you get a fish and it's just amazing. I've been fishing since 10 and haven't had much luck and then we caught this giant bass just a little bit ago. So it sounds like you really like to fish, I right? I love fishing. What do you like about fishing? Um, it's what I do when I'm bored sometimes because it's just calming, I guess you could say. And it also is exciting when you pull up the fish that you've been trying to catch. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be.
Clinton River is really a gem within an urban environment. It's one of the most populated watersheds in southeast Michigan. So you feel like you're up north, you don't see anybody around, um, it's very quiet, peaceful. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun to paddle. We have this fantastic uh, resource that's accessible to one and a half million people. We have uh, 72 miles that run from the start of it all the way down to Lake St. Clair that's paddleable. For us in Shelby, it's uh, Yates Cider Mill. We have to get out right there, there's a portage for the dam, and then we can go all the way down to Heritage and get out there. There's a couple spots in between you'd put in at Yates uh, Cider Mill, then you can get on here at Cowdy Joe's on Ryan Road, and then there's River Bends you can put in there, and Heritage Park. Part of the Clinton River, it, it can be deceiving, um, but there are various aspects of the river that paddlers of all ages and skill sets can accomplish. The Clinton River varies for uh, your skill level in different areas. So uh, through Shelby Township, it's more of classified as an intermediate class three type river due to the log jams, uh, debris, uh, and then the fast water at times. So when it rains, we have pretty quick moving water uh, with a pretty good drop through this area of the river. So it's, uh, you definitely need some skill to be able to paddle through here. As you go down the river, it slows down a little bit, less drop, and then it's easier to paddle. In Shelby, we have markers that are for safety, markers for us to find you. So through Shelby Township, it's pretty much the river runs through the park. And uh, through that park, we don't have very good access to find people. So when they wipe out or get into a jam, uh, then they need to call 911 and we can then locate them by those markers. So those markers have a number that starts with the one and goes all the way down into Utica. So we're all the way into the 40s. From that point, we can uh, locate where you're at easier. So if you see a marker 25, you would tell us you're at marker 25 and we can find you very, relatively easy. Always plan for your uh, trip on the river. Definitely wear a PFD. The river water changes quite quickly. So if you have your PFD and you wipe out, you want to give, get a game plan before you go. Let somebody know where you're going and what timeline you're going to be on. You don't want to go solo. Always want to have somebody with you. Since the 1970s, the Clinton River has undergone a lot of development, a lot of industrial pollution. Um, but then, since the inception of the Clinton River Watershed Council, which we're approaching our 50th anniversary, it has improved considerably. The mission of the Clinton River Watershed Council is to protect, enhance, and celebrate the Clinton River itself, its entire watershed, and Lake St. Clair. So it's a big mission for a small nonprofit organization. Um, but we do great jobs in educating the public. We do fantastic work in trying to restore the riparian zone and banks of the Clinton River, um, and just general watershed management, helping municipalities really plan how they can uh, build out or protect this natural resource. Yeah, you'll have fun on the Clinton River. It's, it's a pure gem. It's, uh, it's up north in your backyard. It's a lot of fun and you'll, you'll really enjoy it. The Clinton River is a fantastic natural resource that really spans urban environments, suburban environments, and even rural environments. Um, so paddling it you can really experience nature in its true glory. And so I invite everyone to come out, experience it for yourselves, and really pay attention to what this natural resource is offers, offering you and your entire community. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest! You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you.
working on the leaves and the flowers. Dry off and let him dry off in the breeze. 